Okay, delivery process for the 1640 TK50 2007. Handle whenever you're ready. It was a setup of the of the camera that somebody messes with. Time time swap or something like that. Time warp. Time warp, yeah. Uh -huh. Um okay, so um in the front, it's pretty straightforward, just like any old trailer. Um you got a military trailer look. And this is uh fifteen thousand. You got you cross the chain and then there's a breakaway switch. If the unit had gotten loose, it'll apply the brakes on the unit and that runs off the battery. Brakes are new. Brakes are new. If the battery had gone dead on the pump, then of course you're not gonna get any brakes. So it, it, have that hooked up because if a lawyer gets a hold of you and it breaks away and they figured out it was disabled or whatever, when they're gonna burn you, they're gonna burn you good. So, and it's a DOT violation. <clears throat> so you got a seven pole connector here. You have a right, left, stop, and running lights. And everything except reverse. Okay. Uh, same with the jack. You know, it's a repetition jack. The foot comes down and you line it all the way up. Right? Um, inside the top here is a radiator cap here in the pole. And that's for uh, green and green. Okay. Uh, I think the pink out. Yeah, because he didn't, yeah. Keep that pink shit out, and that's fucking dumb. But um, you, you about got to take the radiator apart to do the serpentine belt. So we just take them apart. I'm going to dump it anyway, so we dump it on the ground, put pink and, or green back in there, and put the new serpentine belt. Um, the, have a new serpentine belt. Serpentine belt. Right. So um, this engine is a 2012 uh, TDC. So this is a tier three, not a four. So um, this is the next generation. Um, if you want to see, uh, this is not a four final, but this is a four. You can tell the difference between the block. So this is a four. So that's how you can distinguish between the two. So there's not much difference. Um, one's more electronic than the other. Um, the only electronics were different was uh, here, the fuel cell here. Yours doesn't have a sensor on it, this one does. That's the only difference between the two. Um, in the drill, you can change on this. Um, through a program, the drool you can't. This is at the point where you uh, throttle it up. Um, it, it, this has an internal uh, governor in it. That, that, that comes, you, know, you can't just pull it and it do 2100 RPM. You don't know, need to go up that governor comes up and step. And you can set that differently to the drool. That's fine. So that's the only difference between the two. You're always in your own wide open. Oh, yeah, hold on. Wide open. Unfortunately, you. Through the tank, through the filter, through the cooler, and back to the tank. 21 liters of minutes, that's all that, that does. So if you slow the engine down, you slow your cooling and cleaning capability up real quick. So you will overheat, you will. So if someone tells you, hey, get out of here, you know. Right. So the engine is uh, a TDC, so it's, it's a normal just like the engine or uh, in your truck, every 250 engine hours. The truck is 10,000 miles. And the Deutsch is 250 engine hours. And then here, you have your engine hours. Yeah, so you got um, oil, fuel, secondary, and your air filter stuck up in there. You see the air filter canister? It's good to change all three after 250, 250 hours. 250 hours. And then you'll also do your hydraulic filter too. Okay. And you should, it should, you should do it, you know, relatively twice a year, but I've seen guys go eight or nine months. If you're using a full synthetic, and I see them even long, long run of the year. But you must change this at 250. Okay. What? Oh. Uh, we're using a, a Ro Rotilla T4 10W30. 10W30. And that's the climate induces to here. You know, so you might get 90 degrees, you know, like today. So that is inducing to here. Now, if you go to a little bit colder, then you can run a little bit heavier. You can. I'm in the south so it's about the same. About the same, yeah. I, I stick with the 1030. Hydraulic oil, so um, you would you would call us or I, I um, he's gonna send you a PDF of all the parts breakdown on the on the on the machine. So you when you call us you call us with a part number. And it'll make it easier for you. And it, it, it's listed in there. Right. You give them the number. Um, you can even text it to them. Listen, I need three of these. I need one of these. I need I need it next day or I don't really need it now. Send it to me on a, on a regular ground. Right. And you know that usually costs you what twenty five bucks for a regular ground shipping. So now you can convert them. I don't recommend it, but you can convert them. Um, you can convert them to a to a, a, a Napa filter. There is a conversion for them. It's in the pH, pH uh, 047 or some shit, 53. But you can convert them. 
Um, and that's at 250 hours. Um, your filler and then your oil. And there's a breather up on top. You can't fill from the top, but that's not really the industry norm on, on the side. This gentleman, I don't know for whatever, I guess stealing used oil was a thing, so he put a lock on it. I don't know. I kind of left it on. I thought, well, fuck, he made a lot of trouble to make a lock on it. I might as well keep it on there. So I left it on there. It was kind of interesting. But I don't know who would steal somebody, used somebody, oil. Somebody might have been sabotaging. Yeah, yeah that could have been too. I mean, I don't. I can think of better ways to sabotage it's easier, but yeah. well, I, I guess it's I, I just know how hard it is to take an engine out and put one in. I would never do that shit to you. I'd take, take one of your proximity switches out and left that and turn it on. That shit shoot to the moon, you know? Holy fuck, you see him run around like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's something interesting, you know? But, uh, so um, there is uh, on the fuel, uh, the fuel tank here, there is a low spot. Um, everything, all tanks are at a V. So um, I, if you feel right here, there's a low spot here, there's a runoff, so you can let fuel out. So in your monthly inspection, you let a little bit of fuel out. And because the returning fuel is hot and the diesel is cold, you're gonna get expansion, you're gonna get condensation. So it will condensate. The same on the hydraulic tank. If you look over here in the corner, back there in the corner, you see that quarter turn valve? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, so you let a little bit up there. And this be on a, a monthly inspection. All right. So he'll give you daily, weekly, monthly, yearly inspection on the PBS. So all tanks are out of E. And you will, especially in the hydraulic tank. I mean, well, you know, you won't see much of it. You know, it might take you five years, but then in five years, the first time that main drag, you know, sucks it up and it, it, it's in. Um, a guy wiped a tank out from the factory with one of these, and there was enough hair on one of these to blow a main drive up. Hmm. That's, how, that's how the tolerances on them are so close on this rocket valve pump. I mean, it, it takes a lot of, it takes a hell of a pump to get 300 bar, you know, 7,600 PSI. So you can imagine, I mean, the tolerances are close, real close. So don't take much. And uh, they they suck through a screen, but they return through a filter. So if it, um, in, in theory, it's a closed system, the only way you can get water is in condensation. You dump water in the tank, or if you let the packings get bad, and like you were discussing, you let it get cold, and then at night it, it cools down. It, the first time it's gonna suck in like a straw. So then you start the machine up, it returns to all of them, you get water. So like I said, it won't be much, but then over time, you know, so um, you're always gonna, the fuel and the oil, you're gonna do this just like um, oil and, or uh, oil and water, you know, salad dressing. You, know, you shake it up, you, you let it sit, it'll separate. So this is in the morning, level, bleed off. Not after, you know, the job and it's still hot. It doesn't work that way, it's still con it's condensed. Though. Okay, so moving on back to, I showed you the proximity switches, you got three. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of discuss them a little bit more later. Um, agitator, so uh, the industry norm is always to you, and that's in a forward gear, that's bringing the material into the material cylinder. Um, away would you get air pocket. Um, now you won't see this in, you know, as you can look in there, the agitator blades, you know, you get a six inch slump, seven inch, eight inch. You know, I mean, it's, it's too loose. It doesn't move anything. But doing shot creep, it does have consideration. You'll get mm -hmm. a lot of air. Mm -hmm. So you always want to be pulling towards the cylinder. The cylinders. Yeah. Um, they're, 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 they're somewhat effective, mainly is if you're waiting for your call patch. You use forward reverse. You know, get your shovel, mix it up there, forward reverse, kind of mix it up a little bit inside the operator. That's what you use the reverse the most. But uh, normally, um, I'm going to. Oh, okay. um, so then you got your hy hydraulic filter, and then you got a, uh, a simple uh, static gauge, and that works off vacuum. So in the morning, you're going to see it get into the yellow and in the red, and then as it gets warmer, it'll come down to, to green. So you're going to read this at the end of the job. You're going to see where you're at. You'll never, if you change it 250 hours, you're never going to get into the red. You'll never. You start waiting, uh, you know, eight, nine months, you're going to start to see it creep up into the red. Hydraulic fluid's like your blood, so if you keep it clean, you're going to have a good good life. If you keep it dirty, you're going to be long. We scrubbed the tank down already. Um, there's a set of magnets that hold, that it's called particle migration, and where the stream goes or the fluid, you can kind of see, as you look in there, you can see the dirt. You can actually make the stream, you can actually see it. So that's where we place the magnets in the stream. So, um, about, you know, about every, in, in the yearly, it's going to say inspect the hydraulic tank. That means you take all the fluid out, pop the caps off, and look, and put your hand in and wipe it, and see if you see anything. If so, then clean it out. Um, usually, it's going to take about, you're into year two or three with the, with the fluid that we're using. Um, we're using an a Anywhere 46, so it's an AW46. So, in theory, you should get 4,600 hours out of it in the life of it. Now, if you get it hot and it capulates, um, you start adding oil a lot, of course you're not going to get the 4,000 pounds, you know. Um, bulk oil is dirty by nature, even clean oil is dirty. 
So in a closed system, how you can contaminate the system is you keep adding oil to it. So if you see a leak, fix it. You know, stop, stop the, the hemorrhage. Because you by adding oil can contaminate the system. Unless it's filtered. Um, we got a filter cart that we built. And this is, uh, this is two microns ago. So it's a little five foot two. And this is filtering in this pan. The five microns and the two microns. So that's both of them we're filtering in. So that's how tedious, you know, it gets. Clean. So just be mindful of doing it. You keep adding all the contaminants, you know, or you're going to lose the filter quick. Hydraulic tank, you, need, you know, put the degreaser in there. I mean, you can do it somewhat, but then you're always using oil. That means you've got to refill the tank. That means you've got, you know, you've got to put new oil in, new oil dirt. So I, what's in the machine stays in the machine. If you want to, I, I keep a five-gallon bucket of hydraulic fluid, and I'll mix it, you know, and, at, at the shop, put some diesel in, and then use it for a sprayer. You know, I'll never take it from the machine. Um, they got so far as uh, a lot of guys, especially on boom trucks. They'll hook it to the gas here line. Hook a wand in a sprayer, and they'll turn the edge on, spray the whole machine down. But that will your work. So that's how much they don't want you to touch with hydraulic fluid. They don't want you because we had too many, too many problems with, with uh, Rex You know, they they you know they tell you one thing. Listen, he, you know, we said it don't man, it's contaminants. Contaminant. No matter what you do, contaminant. we live on a big fucking island here in Florida. I mean, everything's gonna be contaminated, but they gave you on that. So, <clears throat> so it, it didn't matter what you did. If you seen that, you avoided the warranty right there. That means you pulled the bin off. Of it. You put it on a sheet of paper and you send it to corporate office. If they hung something from the boom, um, if the guy was pulling a uh, hose from the frame that won your warranty, I'd come out there and pull the, uh, the tag off of, of the frame. So they wanted, you know, I mean, it just, it, over the years, man, everybody, you know, just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. You're constantly coming back with new units, you've got to replace them, you've got to replace them. Come to find out, you know, it's, it's taking all of them, all box, you know what I mean? So just be mindful. You see a leak, pick Always try to keep your old, where is that? You know, it's been filtered. It's cleaner than clean, you know what I mean? You can't, the filter you can't even break through. So, trust me, if it was something in the old, you can't it. Um, you got your water box in, you, just, you know, where to fill it, how to fill it. Um, you fill it up every day, you let it out at the end of the day. Because you know, a rod cools different than the casing. The, the, the rod is chrome hardened, and the casing is just steel, tool steel. I mean, so they, they contract differently. And that means one will get one will stay small and the other one will get big, and then you got a neoprene ring in there and you can't hold the seal. It'll suck a little bit of water in, and then of course you return it. So when I'm I'm talking, um, I'm your fluid loop. Right. Correct, correct. And I just I just flip it over. That's it. So I'll bring it back one stroke. I just initiate the switch over. Instead of going all the way down and coming all the way back up, I shortened it. So if you switch over, em emulate a switch over. So every time I hit that button, this, this S tube is going to switch over and then the piston is going to come back. Holy. Where, uh, it's on the end of the head. Um, so that, that's, I'm just tricking the system. That's all I'm doing. You use the test, test, test button differently than I'll use it. As a mechanic, I would hold it. So if I hold it, Differently than I use it. I use it for main pressure, and you're going to emulate a switchover, so you use it differently. Um, now you're going to call me and say, "Listen, here, I, I turn the machine on. I, I, I got the flow all the way out, and it ain't doing anything." Well, let's fire a switchover and, and hold it, and I want to see how much pressure you build. 
Well, it builds 3,000. We know it's not hydraulic then, so we split the system. Now it's electronic. Okay. Yeah. So this right here is your switch over? Uh, no. The test button switch. Test button. Button. Yeah. Okay. That was your reverse. It's a momentary. That's a reverse. Okay. So it's always going to stay in reverse every time I hit this. So that so this is not a forward gear. This is an ignition gear. Pump on, pump off. Pump on, pump off. If this is off, it's always now in a forward gear. Always. If I turn it on, it's always in a reverse. I turn the machine off, the momentum off, it's still stuck in reverse until I switch switch down. So that's how that works. And in order to don't to to not damage the machine, you'll have to uh, turn the pump off, then Correct. do the switching, cool. and then pump it on again. Right. Because all you're doing every time that you're right on the forward reverse valve is where the spool is. So in theory, if you went from forward to reverse, you would shove that spool as hard as you can on the other side with working pressure. It's about you know, maybe five bar or so, about 100 psi. But it's enough to jam it, and now it'll be stuck in reverse until I get in there and dig it out or replace it. So he, he is correct. Um, anytime you go from forward to reverse, you must turn the machine off and then go out of reverse and then go back into a forward gear. Okay. Yep. And never do a wise running. Wise. Why mm -hmm. it's in reverse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or no, forward, I mean, it won't happen to you today, tomorrow, but you know, in a year, it'll finally bam, and it'll be, it'll be What position is it supposed to run in when you're pumping? Like, like that, now. yeah. Like pumping so when, forward. When you get a clog and you need to bust the line loose, you turn that off, yeah. put it in reverse, turn it back on, back it up, yeah. and then turn Correct. it off. Correct. And then you can go back and forward. Correct. Correct. That's just, that's just a, a, a pump on and off. And it just so happens when you Hola. normally, if you turn pump on and off, it's always in a forward gear, always, unless you initiate the reverse. The binary code for it is always set up for a forward. I forward. can turn it off while I turn the pump off while it's in reverse, and then flip it back down to forward, and then turn it back on. Correct. That's the normal. And that just doesn't shove the spool from one end to the other. You, you've got it now in the middle, and then it goes on to the end. Yeah. And then this is your. Test, test button. Test button. That emulates test. the switch over. Correct. If a proximity switch had gone bad, you hit the test yeah. button. Mm -hmm. It would pressure out like it did, and then you just flick one time. And it goes back into a new thing. It's a momentary switch. Okay. These are latch switches here. They stay up. It's latch. It's always on. Momentary. This? Your fan. Cooling fan. Okay. So, so the hydraulic radiator. Cooling fan come on. I, I can't hear you, but that's why I always turn it off. But when, when you're, if you're pumping, you're always in a fan. Always. So Especially always, in Georgia, it gets hot. When I'm pumping, leave this on, it don't come on automatically. It will, but like cooking oil, it'll go. Too late. Yeah, it'll go way past you overheat before that has any effect on that. So go ahead and turn it on as soon as you start. As soon as you start, yeah. Okay. A lot of owner operators um, usually wire them together. Um, and as you turn the key, key switch on, they'll put these two wires mm -hmm. together and just screw them together. Mm -hmm. And when you turn the key switch on, it's always on. Mm -hmm. And that keeps you from forgetting. Because, you know, over the years, you know, owners have figured out that, you know, they get a call, hey, man, this thing doesn't, you know, and it just keeps getting hot and hot and hot and hot. And then pretty soon, that was in white. two or three years, the machine ain't worth a shit. So they've been getting hot so many times, they fried all the cylinders out of it, you know. So they wire them together. There is a sensor, like you, like, like we were discussing, but like cooking oil, I mean, it'll get, it get to, it'll come on at about 100 and, 120, but then it'll get to about 170 before it finally does any good. You see any effort, you know. Because you remember, there's only a two degree drop on a cooling fan in a radiator is only two degrees. So as it's coming in, it's going in 150, it's coming out 148. So it takes a while for it to start cooling again, you know what I mean? So only three months. Um, the, the turn it on, is you turn it on, you turn it into the start position. And then the start. Uh, this is for a tag out, lock out feature. Um, if you're gonna work on it, you can put it in neutral. So this panel or the remote panel doesn't work now. Nothing works. You can't engage anything. And then, of course, the line going away from the box is for your remote setting. Okay. Now, the, only the remote works, and anything you do on this panel will not work. So, so you could be 100 feet away and start flipping the levers. It doesn't really matter. Now, the e-stop does work, however. They come by and hit the e-stop, it'll kill the motor. That's the only thing that will kill it. So um, you're going to hear a click. It's, Hear it click, mm -hmm. and that's a fuel solenoid come online. If I hit the e stop, no, I don't no. hear a click anymore. Yeah, and you're gonna get a red light. Mm -hmm. The same with the hopper brake switch. If, if, if you leave it up, you're gonna get a red light and you're not gonna hear a click. So in the morning, you be mindful, if you don't hear a click, you know something's wrong. It's a safety related item. It's not bad. Either the switch has gotten wet and corroded and fused together, 
or whatever. Somebody pulled it out or pushed it in or whatever. So the same with the switch here. All that is is on a cam. And as the cam comes up, it opens up the switch. On you this can, in theory, take the cam off and take the two wires and put together. However, I don't recommend you run it for long, but I would, you know, that gets you through the job. You know what I mean? Um, you, for whatever you... Um, How often do you these get, stuff go bad? That one probably never, because nobody hardly ever used it. This one, however, goes bad periodically. Um, usually it'll get you, um, you do 20 yards and they have a four-year call pack. Well, I can wash up in 15 minutes, I wash up. I wait, you know, because a callback might take you an hour and a half to get, you know what I mean? So, I bullshit, I go in the truck and sit in the air conditioning and bullshit on my phone, you know what I mean? I can wash up 15 minutes, real quick. A quick wash up, you know what I mean? So you lift the grate up, you're washing down, you pull it down, boom, you get the truck. You come back, try to start it, take switch on that. And there, pull the cover up, put the two wires together, boom, let's go. However, I'm, I'm ordering one, I'm already called, you know, Juan, hey, listen, man, send me another switch. I need it. Because um, that, that is a fatality. <laughs> That's a big one. It won't stop for nothing, right? No, I said I'm at 200 bar. That's 5200 PSI. It's going to pull you in. You'll be lucky if it tears your arm off. You'll be lucky. It won't. You'll be lucky if it, if it rips your arm off, yeah. you said? Yeah. Okay. Well, you'll still live. But <laughs> it won't. It'll drag you in, unfortunately. <laughs> um, you, they're, they're pretty much, like I said, it's a thinking man's game. They're unforgiving. I, 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 unfortunately, when you get this big now, you're in the big boy game. There's, cool. there's no second chances. On a C30, you know, you get slapped pretty good. You might miss a tooth. You might get your teeth knocked out. <laughs> you live another day, you talk about it. These are very unforgiving. Unforgiving. So just be mindful of what you do. You always verify zero. I turn the machine off before I work on it. You know, you get around and I'm pumping and you're acting crazy. Get the fuck away from me, man. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to lose a bunch of fingers. Um, this one here, I would this one here. It was a class action lawsuit. For whatever reason, I don't know, I got there after the fact, but for whatever reason, the guy who run the machine, I don't know, seen a rock in there, and it was probably 30 yards into it, and I guess he couldn't get to it. He had to have it. So he went to grab it, and that thing lopped off four fingers. Mm. Four of them. Well, this is when the 6-0 came out, and the almost they showed up, broke down on the way to the hospital, and the guy put the death and died. Mm. So Ford, Schwing, and myself got implicated in the flash action mm. mm. I think Ford ended up paying out. Swing, however, did. But we can add the That's part of the lawsuit. So it, just be mindful for something you see every day. You, you kind of lose respect of it, man. You, you know, the sticker there for a reason, man. Uh -uh, I'm turning the machine off. Zero. I can reach for it. Um, the accumulator system. It, it's a cheap way of making an extreme amount of power. So on accumulator, what it is is you got a small pump running an air bottle. So this bottle here has a, a rubber bag in it and we put inert gas, nitrogen in it, so it doesn't blow up, kill it. So that bag has 100 bar, plus 100 bar from the pump against it, now you've doubled it, 200 bar. And that's what you see here on the switch over for the accumulator. So you're gonna see it bleed down. So I'm gonna turn it off and you're gonna see the gauge around 90 and then snap off. That's your pretension gas on that bag. You're gonna do this on a monthly inspection. Not 90, around here, right? No, 90. Oh, 90? There you go. Okay. Mm. The, the specs are from about 40 to 90. That's the specs. So as long as you stay in that area, you're good. You get below 40, 35, you need to call us. And I'll either send you a new bag or you need to bring it to a, a place to air it up. Yeah. So they're like a bicycle tire, um, it, it, like a car. If you leave it sitting for a long time, it's gonna go flat. If you use it every day, you'll never see it. It'll always be at 90 every day. But you'll do this on a monthly inspection, you'll check. So that's a cheap way of making a lot of power. However, the downfall of the system is, <laughs> it's always a butt. If the bag should go bad, the pump is now gonna to try to accommodate 200 because it needs 200 to shift over. You're gonna run the pump off. So now you gotta pay the bag, which is about 800 bucks, and the pump, which is about two grand. So you've doubled your money. Where you could've just tested it once a month and paid the $800, boom, you're good for you know, another five, 10 years, whatever. So there's a drawback. So the way you test it, you crook it up. You just crook it up. Just crook it up? Yep. yep. It's Mindful about the zero. Those cages can't get stuck. Well, I'm sorry. 
it's called a relay dump valve and it can get stuck debris you know o-ring in the system get lodged in it and now it doesn't dump now it's looking for a signal switch you put your arm in the ass then you pull around it so it's just rolling mm. i mean I, you see these oils that's how i cut that wood don't put that rock off don't stop they cut it like butter mm -hmm. all day long <laughs> okay well that the, 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 business, the, the, the industry norm is no no farther than your wrist. No farther than your wrist. So you can put your hand in there, you see something, get a piece of rebar. Hook it out. Turn the machine off, verify zero, put your arm in there, you're okay then. Put the feet, you know, as soon as it gets hot, you get aggravated, you get a piece of shit out of the house, you pull a lady up, whatever, you lose your arm. Big your lady up. So just verify that there's always zero on the case. That's that's the that's much. And, and you just you know, be mindful of what you're doing. You know, don't get a big hurry. You know, the trust your family, though. You know, what do you care? You know, I, I, I trust me. If if somebody calls you and says, listen, can you, it's at 1 o'clock, can you be over my side of town at 4 o'clock and pump 40 yards? And you got 10 yards left, you're not going to make it. I know you like to think you're not, you're not going to make it. You're going to rush yourself, you're going to get hurt. Or you're going to use a hose, and that's all you're talking about. You leave the clip. Nowadays, you leave a clamp or somewhere to your process. You know what I mean? So don't get a big hurry. I, I'm here, I'm here. You know, I get another job, I'll tell you when I'm in. You know, I'm, I'm the first one to get I, I, I work my ass off. We don't get anything crazy. Okay, so uh, moving on. Um, and you talked about your main, uh, your main drive, your barn fuel pump, and then that's why you always leave it revved up. You're always, you're always at 2200 RPM. And then you control it with the flow. Screw it in, slows the pump down, he turns it off. So if you, I don't want to get a phone call, hey, I got the light on, and it ain't doing nothing. Check your flow control. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't want to get that phone call. Flow control. That's what it's for, volume control. And percentage-wise, you're telling the regulator on the pump to demand what comes on. So that line is running this little whip line. It's a feed line. It's working pressure. So that's all that's doing. It's feeding about 200 bar, or I'm sorry, about 20 bar. And it tells the, the regulator to push it on the, on the swash plate. You said this control this? No. No. That that turns you, that tells the pump to come online. But it doesn't know what percentage right? what to come on to. Come on. I got to turn it screwed all the way in. That's why the gas. That's why the gas pedal for the pump. Right. Right. Correct. Exactly. Correct. So you tell the pump, okay, it start working, but it doesn't know how much to work. You tell it how much to work. Thirty-five percent, right? Correct. So each turns of ten percent. Every turn. About three and a half rounds out, it should be working. Correct. Give or take, until you find the sweet spot. Correct. Right. So, um, the, 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 if you look over on the tag on the far, you, 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 you kind of try to like how many strokes a minute you're going to get. So, the machine that rated, so you're at TK50, you're around 50, 53 yards an hour. So, that's relatively at 32 strokes a minute. So, that's about relatively what you're going to get. Strokes. Now, you call me and say, listen, here, I'm only getting 25 strokes a minute. What well, the, remember, at the point of deregulation, now you're not going to get 35, 36. Mm -hmm. It's, it's unrealistic to obtain that. So and that's running it wide open. Mm -hmm. Wide open, correct. From the factory, all we're running is water and it's um, silicon sand. And that's what we're getting our, our Loop. average. So we run three times. The best of, that's what we put, strokes per minute. Now you can combinate by moving the horsepower curve on the main pump around a little bit. And then, uh, but you, gotta, you, you can't take one and not the other. So if I move strokes per minute, I'm lowering the flow of the pump. That means I can't downstream, I, I'm gonna lose PSI. Pressure. So you gotta take one from the other, you gotta cheat from somewhere. So, correct, correct. So this like pump, if you can think, power. I mean, hell, if you set this to, uh, as far, if you choked it all the way down, even the space shuttle, you, you, you can't move that pump. I mean, it, 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 a pump has no no valve to tell it, no, either it'll blow up or, or just draw the engine down, you know, shut off. So that's, so at some point you gotta regulate it, you know, where, how much to come on and how far to go. If it had a million horsepower, it would Took a million horsepower on nothing. And that's what pump does. You know what I mean, it likes power. It wants it. You know what I mean? That's the reason why you got to give it a curve. I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever seen the ride harder or another pump. You see them roll, bogging the roll, roll. The pump set too high. You know, it's asking too much of the engines. Or you know, got injector. But from the premise that it's an old pump, you probably not got knocked off somewhere down the street. Or so you do get knocked off a little bit. Or you didn't rev it enough, right? Or rev it up, correct. You're asking too much to teach. Because every every time that you're pumping with this one, you have to keep it at least one, 2100 p, uh, RPM? 22. 2200, 2200 
100 RPM. Yeah. So there, there is a factor in, 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 in that's what you're setting on the horsepower curve. You know, you're, you're telling the, the pump what the engine is mounted to, you know, what, what it is, what it's doing, how much, that, that's really why the, um, for us, uh, the horsepower on the engine is a uh, big, and then how much, you know, how many uh, liters a minute of fuel it's taking in, we take that in consideration. So that's, that's what the, the tag is for, is it's telling us the kilowatts. So that's what we're setting the pump at. You know, if it's a bigger pump, it's the same pump. We're just setting it down. So this sub pump is the same as a 40 or a 30. We're just setting it accordingly to the engine. So um, you got your cooling fan here. So that, yeah, if you follow, if you follow it on the turning fluid, it comes back and then you go to the main drive. And then there's a the fan. Your battery's here. Starter. Uh, radiator's up front. That starter is brand new, right? Brand new start. Start lugging, alert lugging. So I'm um, working, working on back. Um, we won't go to electronics. We'll just kind of move on around electronics, and then we'll come back to it. So you got your volume control. You got your main pressure. This is the head piston. You got your cumulative pressure. Yeah. What, what the switch over is. How much it, it's asking for the swing thing. Correct. Right. So um, as you can see, it, it, when it was going, it was just dipping. It, did, you know, it doesn't go down much. Um, as, as it demands more, it'll dip farther, farther. If it starts getting down to around the zero mark, then you need to call it something wrong. Usually, even on the roughest mix, it'll only go down to about 15. And then come back up. Only take about a second to recover. Um, so moving on, you got your material cylinders, which house the, the concrete. So as one's pulling, one's pushing. Brand new. Right. So. Uh, if the rock valve is orientated in this hole, it's pushing concrete out through the hose, one is sucking back. You know, tape switched over, and now that one's pushing. So that's how that works. Um, your, your switch over cylinders, um, the switch over yeah. the, the retaining plate. So um, let me let a little bit of water out, and I'm going to show you how this works. It's kind of a pinch. So um, on your monthly inspection, it's going to ask you to check the end plate of the cutting room. You can change the end plate by that nut. You can make it tighter. If you loose, the cutting ring will actually fall out and down out of the rock wall. If you need to be loose. Now when we set them up, we set them up a little bit tight. So you're going to go, you know, relatively, probably six months before you have to adjust it. Not, not long. If it goes on yard, it's telling it might go a year. If you're only doing three jobs a week, <laughs> it might be longer than that. So if you come over here and look, see see the yellow part, and you got the little chrome ring in the center, and then you got the the rock valve or the S two. Mm -hmm. You see that? So so you got the the wear plate that's stuck to the back here. Mm -hmm. You got the cutting ring, mm -hmm. and then you got the S two. You see the gap between the cutting ring where the chrome piece is? Yes. You stick about two quarters in there, mm -hmm. and that's about where you want to stay. If you don't. If you get about three quarters, then you're going to do a one flat. Not three quarters, you're going to do about a flat. This is a flat of a nut. So you're going to take, you're going to take these two lines off. They're 17s, three 19 millimeters, and this plate's going to come off. You can't pump it with it off, but you can, for for what we're doing, you take it off. And then you're going to go see where the retaining nut is here. This is a flat, so you're going to tighten it one more flat here, and it'll give you about about a a sixteenth or the size of a quarter. So you're going to do this from this flat to this flat. Correct. And then you're going to put everything back on. Real simple. And this is about about once a year, you know. And now, if you're pumping 16 jobs a week, well, you might have to do a little bit more than that. But on the average, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, probably seven, eight jobs a week, you know, about once a year. You're into it. What will you see if that gap gets wide, just other than the gap? Anything? Well, um, what will happen is uh, you let it go that much more, and then you two times that amount, the cutting ring's gonna fall out. You just pump nothing. There's your whole gap through it. You won't pump anything. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead in the water. You can take a whole ass in a power, put the cutting ring back in, slide it all back to yeah. that, that kills you on the job, unfortunately. So, um, just like the piston cups, if you lose a piston cup on the job, that, that kills you. You gotta stop, force it with a piece of steel all the way back, tighten it back up. Chances are the bolts have run off, or the threads have, turns into a big thing. So, you check the bolts, Check the end plate. You know, um, I usually check the bolts once a week, but I, I make a point to train the guys. Check them every day. That way, you have no problem. Um, we had a guy here. This guy, uh, this 260. 
Um, his guy's score, he checked it. We come in, we bring it in here. Um, it, it keeps missing a stroke. Come to find out the damn bits cups off. Bolts were, were, were fell out. All four bolts were in the water box. Couldn't even see that, you know I mean? So they weren't checking shit. <clears throat> so be, you know, be mindful. Um, in the book, it's gonna call for about a weekly inspection, but I just, every day. And the same with that, every day. I look at it. When I'm watching that, you're already there. You know, you're yeah, greasing. Mine you're as well. Boom, you're looking right at it, you know? So you're doing much more than just greasing here out there. <laughs> what if the grease line broke? Yeah, you're not greasing anything, you know what I mean? So I'm checking stuff out. Where's it going? Okay, boom, I see it. Okay, good time read. boom. You know, it takes 30 seconds. You get trained right every day, you know, it's, it's really easy. It's second nature, you know? And that's what it takes every day. You go out and come back every day, every day, every day, you know? The machine don't cost you shit for five years. What I usually do is I take 2% of the ticket and I put it in a savings. And at the end of the year, if I don't spend no money on the machine, I take them all out of your vacation. If I do, you know, usually at the end of the year, you'll come up with about three grand. You know, I, man, that's, that's a good year for you. It means you're doing your job. You didn't lose anything. You know what I mean? You can put that in the savings and keep adding up or you can take your lady, you know, where. <clears throat> but most of the time, you'll find a bad operator to use that 3000 every year. You gotta do something, ask them rebuild, new cylinder, piston calf, whatever. Because he's not trained right, or he's not, you know, he's not thinking ahead. Why does this keep wearing out? What am I doing wrong? You know? So, like I said, it's a thinking man's game. You know, if you're smart and you go out every day and, you know, in theory, the machine lasts you five years with no money, you make a shitload of money. You know, enough to buy another machine, cash. Yeah. You know, it gets real quick. But you got to be good, got to be efficient. Um, the book he's going to send you on PBF, it tells you everything. It's pretty detailed. You know, they've got it figured out. Check this, check that. You know, did you wash out right? <clears throat> Do you see any in play? Look in the rock valve. Do you see any, you know, you see any residue? Well, you're not cleaning out right. You know? I mean, it's pretty entailed. So you just, you just go through it and, you know, read 10 pages a night, every night, you know? Makes real quick. I think it's only, uh, I don't know, maybe two, 300 pages, something like that. But each page is on one topic, you know, the water box. The next page will be on the engine. The next page will be on the ascent. You know, and it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And everything I'm telling you is pretty much on the same book, you know, pretty word for word, pretty much. So, um, switch over and play. Um, we talked about the grease. This is after 50 yards. So if you're doing 60 yards, 50 pulls out, 60 backing up, boom, I get three sports on every one on the indicator, one on the motor. On the motor, it's a little bit tricky. You'll have to look under the step, but you'll see the fitting. See there? Yeah, yeah. So a little tricky. And then copper safety switch here. And if you look under there, you'll see the cam. See it? Yeah. The cam in the wheel? Yeah. It's a pretty straightforward design. Okay. Same on the elevator, same principle. That each floor has a cam. Um, so the, the industry norm is on, for outriggers. Um, if you run over a 250 truck, you don't really need outriggers. The 150, however, you'll blow the transmission out. Eventually, it will. Um, so the norm is you would jack the nose all the way down. You'd set the outriggers down to where they touch. You pull the outrigger all the way up until you get the tension off the tires, and that's how you stop. Not the tires off the ground, but just the tension off. Yeah. Now you can do it high enough to take a tire off, so if you want to leave it on a job, you can do that. Of course, you're probably going to have to put a block there. It's going to be four by four, and that'll get you high enough to take a block. Yeah, it's going to be four by It's not a consideration. You don't need to do that. So, only on the 50 tire. Those Toyotas are pretty pretty temperamental, I and mean, if you've got a Toyota, they probably pull that rear end out pretty quick. Um, it, and, and, the, and the brakes are a lot smaller, too. Um, this does have uh, electric brakes. Um, this is that on your kitchen counter in your truck. These are hot. Um, these brake kits here, um, they're 65 bucks a piece for us. So they're really so cheap. I tend to run these kind of hard. They're cheap versus the truck. You know, more, more hard um, so the coupler here is a five, a five inch heavy duty. And we only run heavy duty. That's uh, industry standard. Uh, no more metric. The only thing you'll find metric now is on the truck. Because they're up in the air and nobody's touching them. And they're always. Metric is acceptable. Twist them and they pop off. So this is a heavy duty. So you're going to get a, a five to three elbow metric. I mean, heavy duty to heavy duty, three inch, and then and then the rest of the way either hose, and then you can run a three to two reducer. If you're going to that. You get your trap door down there. Um, just open it up, and everything goes up. Um, you clean the, cut, the face of the trap door up because there is a rubber O-ring in there. You bring it up, and you let that concrete build up on the cold it cutting the other end and pretty soon it's always, it's always leaking. You don't want to hold any water. It's kind of, I mean, a lot of guys 
it didn't even like that all the time. I'm uh, yeah. um, But, you know, I, I tend to, 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 to wash it off because it makes it easier, you know, to, to clean up. You can show up with a pot on cleaning and all You show up with a new rig and, you know, the chance are you break down, well, hell, you want to pay the man. I mean, I'm going to new rig. I mean, it ain't his fault. You show up with an old bowl of concrete, hell, that's your fault. No matter what happens, it's your fault. Look at that piece of shit, you know. So you do have uh, brake lights, hard signals. Any side the LEDs, and you have room for And that's for the LED. Um, you've got new spindles, brakes, and bearing buddies, and bearings. Um, you, about at 500 miles, you're going to have to retighten that lug nuts. Uh, the tires are, are brand new. Um, you get the one if you want a spare or whatever, it's, gonna, it's just going to be a solid thing. You can, I think you can go down to 10 ply, you can, but you know, you run 12 to so long, Jimmy. You always running over curves, jumping up on shit, you know. So it's like always, I was always fucked up for tires or something. I don't like doing that shit. I'm pretty late. <laughs> so, and then, and then you just got an inspection that you can do at the end of the job, and that turns into your backsplash. Yeah. So, um, moving on into here, in the electronic part of it. So, um, you got your, uh, we'll work on your remote first. So, it, it, I geared up so you could take it off and put it on another machine if you wanted to. It's a simple, take it off, un unbolt it, put it on another machine, and then you can use it again. Yes. So, it's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Plug and play. Yeah. Um, so, so, if I put it in the remote, you're going to have the power on light. So these are the questions I'm going to ask you. Hey, my remote doesn't work. Okay. So tell me what the lights are doing. So the first one's power to the unit. This is to the receiver. I initiate the fire. It starts blinking. Mm -hmm. When it's blinked slow, now they're communicating. You see the blinking? Yeah. If I use a function, reverse, you get the third light. You got a fire. I turn the it off. It goes away. Well, it still ain't working. When well, I know it's in the transmitter, not the receiver now. So we split the system in half. So these are the questions I'm going to ask you. Now, now, if that second light is solid, <coughs> let me If the light is solid, it means you got an interruption somewhere. Someone's got a 900 megahertz radio around you, one of them two-way radios, a pager that still exists, something that works on a 900 megahertz, something close to you. Usually at an airport will do it. Usually the tower's using a two-way. So you're working around something commercial like a power plant or a coal mine or something, they usually give you a problem. Any other time, no. It's a random code. It's about a million uh, sequential numbers. Every time you throw a code, when you use a function, it's looking for another one and another one and another one. So chances are you don't get a lot of interference in the normal setting. So this one, turn it on. Well. So, so remember, a pump is just a forward mechanism. So if I turn it off, you, you see the light right now is on. So if you hit stop, it goes off. You hit pump, it comes on. Yeah. You hit stop again. Yeah. So now you hit reverse. And then you initiate the fire and hit pump. pump. Now, now, you're you're reverse. now you're in reverse. When I hit stop, both lights are going to go out now. Yeah. Yeah. See that? So now you got to go back into reverse again to go back into reverse. Because okay. when you hit pump again, reverse. it's just going to be in a forward gear. Oh. Yeah, now you're in reverse. Okay, stop. Correct. All right, and then I can increase and decrease. Um, this, these are add-on functions later on. Um, I can put a, uh, for $800, I can put a coil on here, and that'll go into your remote, and you can manually, or remotely, remotely you know, turn the volume control up and down. Okay. And I can do the engine speed also. That's what the next switch is for, remotely. And they're a little pricey. They're about 1500 bucks. Right. So it's an add-on system. So basically, this is just going to be my stop on and forward. Yeah. yeah, and you have to manually turn it up or down. So if the guys, you know, you're going pretty, usually, uh, you know, I, when they're pumping, I see them on their tippy toes, I stop. I, I do that all day long. You know, you don't want them constantly working back. You know, it's just too much for them, you know what I mean? So as you bust hose off, you know, of course, they'll be, they get on the flat of their feet. Well, I yeah, go back and turn it off. Because you know I mean? if, you're, if you're not on your tippy toes, you're not going to make much. You know, you're probably... You know, you're in the 20, 25 yard an hour range if they're not on their tippy toes. You know, he's on the tippy toes, they're usually about 30, 35 an hour, usually. So that's about where I put them. Unless he comes and complains, hey man, that thing's whipping my ass. I'll turn it down a little bit. Let them get on the flat of their feet, you know. 
Yeah. But usually I, 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 I just look at their feet and I keep turning up and I see them, I start, they start getting up a little bit. Okay, I'm, I'm holding that. They don't usually complain there. So you just see, you know, it's a game. You see how far you can go with them. You know, okay. you know this crew is different from that crew. You, know, you kind of figure it out. <clears throat> so as you're busting hoses off, of course, you're going to have to, you have to go back and turn it up and then go ahead and turn it back on, unfortunately, in this system. Um, you want me to refill the hopper with water? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So that, that's on the color of the mouth, so I'll do the trick. If I go to reverse, and I hit pump, and I hit pump again, it'll turn off the fuel. It stays it's on reverse. Again. It's going to be in reverse. So if I know constantly that I'm going to be in reverse a lot, then I'll just turn pump on and off that way. And that way it stays in reverse. Instead of hit stop, and hit reverse, and then hit pump again. I, do, I, I just hit pump. So there, there is a trick to it. So um, because I have to install a relay on it, and, and your collapse in the sort of thing. I'll reverse, then pump, and then stop. No. Now both of them went out. So if you hit reverse, pump, hit pump again, yeah, you yeah. Hit reverse pump. Yeah, so and then if I want to pump and reverse again, I just press pump. Correct. On and off, on and off. Correct. Due to, i got to use a relay to the circuit. And then i got to stop, now it's in pump, and I press stop. Correct. Unfortunately, you can cut the circuit, yes. So that's going to be pumping back forward. Correct. So you'd have, you'd have to hit pump twice and then... Stop pumping. Yeah, because, okay. because of the relay. That's be, that, that, the sole purpose is somebody can't come here and override you. That's the whole goal. Yeah. So if someone, you know, whatever labor comes over, sticks a shovel and it falls and it hits your forward, now you have no control of your machine and you're up on the wall doing lentils. Go on, fat. <laughs> Keep that. I always remember to press pump and it's in forward. I'm going to get a reverse, stop it. Stop then reverse. Press reverse. Yeah. Then press pump again. And then you get stop and then both and go out. Stop. Yeah. And then when I press pump again, it's back yeah, and Yeah, it's back, back and forward. forward. It's always stopping before you switch it. No, never. And mm -hmm. they're, they're good, you know, to about five, six hundred feet. They're pretty, they're pretty efficient. Um, you start losing the line of sight, then you start going around the building or something, you got to be relatively close, you know, 250, 300 around the building. Yeah. Especially um, you're going down through, you know, basement, two or three floor, you know, two or three concrete levels. Uh, you know, you got to be pretty close, 150 feet, 75, you know, 175, somewhere around there. Yeah. They drop pretty trusty. So this ain't the one that he was talking about. He was back over there behind us. <laughs> he was way down there. Yeah, the same one. Uh, the same one. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Same. That's probably 650 feet to the... Concord Dryles. Yeah. yeah. So we get to the lake. Huh? So we got to the lake. To the lake, correct. Yeah, they're pretty efficient. But that's line of sight too. Yeah. You know, that's when you see that's down the road and they're, they're taking the machine down that way and I'm going this way. So okay. that's line of sight. When you start going through a building and through levels of concrete, and yeah. the drop's pretty drastic. Okay. On 900 megahertz, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you don't penetrate. I want to make sure I turn this off. Um, in five minutes on, on activity, it will shut off by itself. Okay. Now, if you're in a forward gear and you're pumping all day long, it'll never shut off. But as soon as you hit pump off and you lay it, in five minutes it'll turn itself off. So it's moving around. Oh, should I ever shut off? Um, it takes yeah. two, two to three minutes. And um, the, the green light will flash to orange to red. Orange, you usually have about six good hours before it turns red and shuts off. So I usually keep two AA batteries in the gun box. When I see it flash orange, I, I finish that job and then when I get in the truck. Any certain brand? We did the Aldi shit for a while, but they don't last <laughs> Yeah. Alkaline would be better, right? Yeah. yeah, fly yeah. On. yeah Amazon ships. <laughs> yeah. They're cheap. Um, so that, that's, that's the remote part of it, and that's in a remote setting. Here. In the middle, of course, you have nothing. Even a remote won't work. And then you tag it out with a lock. Now nobody can switch it while you got it running. Just for whatever you're, if you're just doing general maintenance and you just want to switch it back and forth, you know what I mean? You can lock your lock it out. So, so when you do stop it and the engine's still running, you can lock it and then go around there and then look at stuff. And nobody can come here and oh, well, what's this switch for in here? Your hands. You lock it out. Correct. Around it. Correct. You lock it out. And then the keys are here. Um. So that's remote. And then now you got a local panel. And then that the locally the locals work. Always, I might as well just wire that straight to the point. 
a best practice. Harold, this goes right here, right? Can bus, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, you know, you rattle, they fall out, you might drive them out again. Do but you have I'm, the key for closer? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yes. I'm oh. gonna give you, um, the PDF has all these numbers. So when I ask you, what is F1? Check that fuse, you know, because that, that holds, you know, the main, main supply. Um, the five amps are for the switch over, and then the bottom one here for the 20 is, is your main feed. Okay. So, and then there's a couple of them. Um, the five, I'm sorry, uh, the 30 is not going to be used. So you hook your vibrator up, and then that's, that's used. And then you're going to put these two plugs together, here to here. Mm. You put these two together, and then that will be, and then your switch will be here for your switch. Uh, so you just cut that off, and then just put some connectors on it, and then put the micro switch on. Boom, that's that. And then your main power feed to the vibrator is going to come in through here, and then you plug it in here. That's it. Is that? that one, and that one goes to there. This one goes to my switch. Got that? Uh, one. no, no, just the the plug. Just this one. X5 goes from here to here. This is for your micro switch, and this is for your plug coming in. Gotcha. For your vibrator. Gotcha. So it's gonna look like that. Gotcha. And the relays, are, and then you cross it. Um, eight one eighty one is your relay for it. So you're gonna need one relay. One switch. And we'll send you a so kit. So you already got a wire to the relay, the switch, all you got to do is bust them apart. That's it. And then the other two go straight to the vibrator. That's it. And then put that re relay in when we send it to you. The relay comes with the, the vibrator. Yeah, you might as well go ahead and order that. Yeah. He's better electrician than I am. I'm more of a mechanical. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty straightforward. I mean, I um I can get you a wire diagram on demand. I mean I, I got a thousand of them on the show. Pretty pretty easy. Maybe that one went through a pin. If you look in there, they're, they're just numbered. They're all the same color, but they're numbered. And in the back they're numbered. The keys are brown. And then numerical number. You know, 17 might run to the switchover. 18 might run to the proximity switches. The blue ones are the proximity switches. Yeah, it's four um, now this keeps the uh, energy off of. What we were talking about your proximity switches that's a reverse diode or something yeah, yeah. turn that, on and run through it one way so if you wear it the other way it won't run correct so when you call me and say every time i put it in forward i blow a fuse well it's a directional diode that went bad you've charged the battery on the machine you got to take the battery out of the machine charge it and put it back in the machine if you try to do it on the machine hook to the leads you'll blow that directional diode on the spike plug. especially when you're trying to Put on start and then come over here. It fired up. It's gonna pull the diode for sure. It's just too much energy. Run through the system. Because you're running through here through the whole frame up to the computer. Because there's a direct feed from from that line that you're charging to the computer. Yeah, a direct feed. The cable's loose and yeah. Yeah. To actually pick it up. That's the norm, correct? But there is a direct feed from that to the computer. So if the battery's too bad. So you start from the battery. You might as well just change the battery instead of jumping it off. More headache. So, so you got your e-stop and, it, and it's indicated here on the e-stop. Yeah. And then you got fan, reverse, your test switch that we talked about. So on the switch over, seven, eight, seven, eight. Ten is the fire. Ten is the power feed going to it. So you, you, ten is always going to be up. Even even if you don't see seven or eight, you're always going to see ten fire. So seven, eight, and then on K two thirty eight point one is the switch over. K230 plane is the diff cylinders. Yeah. So it knows the POF card, the green POF card, knows when that cylinder is this, when it gets the fire, it knows to send the signal to K238.1. So when it does, it knows, if you look, these lines actually loop into each other. So when it, that cylinder is on this side, it knows we're rocking down on this side. Yes. And vice versa, in reverse. In reverse, it will do the, the, the opposite. Correct. Yes. So there's actually a relay in here. You can see there's an orange relay. And the direction is correct. So if you take it out upside down, you put it in upside down. If you put them, if you put them in wrong, of course, it won't, it won't be changed. Yeah. So that's what it does. So PF, uh, POF card changes from an analog signal to a digital signal, so KQ3 is going to be it. Now, the, the yellow box is a pelt box. And you see when I hit, when I hit the, you lose power. Yes. And until I hit the fire, Initiate, you're going to see both channels come back online. Yeah. Yes. And then once I clear it off, it'll stay on all the time. This is only on the first fire up. So that's what that green pelt box does. It handles e-stop and your hop brake switch. That's all that box does. It cuts yes. main feet off. 
not to just this forward and reverse. Now the newer style, that's all it does, is cut off your forward gear and your agitator line. On the older models, this is generation three, on five, four and five, they, they cut off just the forward gear because they have now thought, it's a dimmer premise, they put an actually compressor that you can suck water out of a 55 gallon drum and wash on the job. Well, if you kill the motor, you kill the compressor too. So it's a different way of thinking. So you can't kill the compressor, so leave the engine running. So it just kills the forward momentum and then the agitator. So anything from 14 and down, it'll kill the motor. So, crank the pump and I crank it. I can test it without a pump. No, it has to be in a pump. Well, in theory, um, you can see the lights work, but you won't see the switch over actually until it's running and it's in a forward gear. Okay. So every time, if in theory, numerical or so like a computer these see ones and zeros um a b c d needs to happen a b c d so if if c is left out it doesn't the machine doesn't know what to do so it just it holds it holds tight with working pressure you figure out where, where c is at you initiate the button again it sees c d e a b c d so that's all you're doing is taking c out of the equation and the machine just holds it both figures out what, what it's going to do next that's all that, that, that is in the premise. So if I initiate the fire again to go forward, it still doesn't see C because I've held the button for five seconds. So I need to hit the button again and now it's CC and it continues on. Is there so, a certain position those need to be in? No. Left there, don't no. Matter. Like I said, the autocorrect takes care of all that. The guesswork for you. Now, um, as the old, if you get on a Pussmeister, an 88 design, yes, you have to do it manually. So I would hold this test button every morning and run that thing all the way down to it stop. And then go ahead and hit it again and let it pump it again. And then if I did 600 yards, I'm gonna have to come down halfway and then recenter them again. That was a downfall. Because it's trying to add oil, always add oil, always add oil. Taking away is a lot more cumbersome, you know, it's a lot a lot more process. So when you pressure it out, it's taking away oil. It's pushing it back to the tank on the return. Because um, 
it's kind of a weird premise. Um, you 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 think uh, one piston's pushing and the other one's sucking. One piston's pushing. It's not true. Joel, only, only one piston is pushing at one time. And then at the bottom, you see the loop line? It's a big loop line. It goes from one piston to the other. So as one's pushing, the other one's pushing back with returning fluid. It's pushing back that cylinder. So if that oil isn't enough, when that piston goes all the way down, it doesn't have no oil to bring this all the way up, it stops. Now you're short. So the next time, it, you know, now you're getting shorter, 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 shorter. You gotta always add oil. So adding oil is a lot easier than taking oil away. So that's what you're doing, is taking oil away from the pressure down. I know it, it seems like a lot, but... <laughs> it is a lot taking you know, one time. It's 30 years of useless knowledge, but... <laughs> it ain't useless, I can tell you. It, it's, it's easy after, after you get in it, you get in the shit for about six months, you, you, after you see it working, you'll, you'll kind of understand. Okay, I, I see how that works now. <laughs> it's weird, but it, I see how it works, you know. You, you know, after you operate it, you look at it, you know, you see it for yourself. That shit ain't right, but it works. I mean, <laughs> you know, it doesn't seem right, but there's a theory behind it, you know. And the theory is, how can I switch over efficiently without getting it to dome? You know, knocking your heart head off. That's the whole theory. That's everybody's... The million dollar That's question. What trying to figure out. Everybody's striving for that. And the two big boys on the block seem that they got it figured out. Trust me, they'll knock you down just the same as the Reed will. Trust me. That's their whole theory. They use electronics and timing and MPS manifolds. Man, they put thousands and millions and billions of dollars in research to try to figure that whole scenario out. So that's what the machine is always trying to do for you. And sometimes it gets confused. So then you get the test switch. You override. So um, the, the engine's always on a, uh, on a time mechanism. We discussed the uh, 250 engine hours. So, you know, it's good to stay by that. Um, you got a simple gauge here for the hydraulic, and then you got a temperature in the center of it. And just kind of give you a, a gray area. Yeah. Um, there is no temperature sensor on, per se, the engine for the computer. Now, on generation four and five, there is. It'll actually slow you down. You'll cut your strokes in half. This one will burn itself up. So if it's getting hot, and you walk by, and it gets hot, you can see what the temperature is and figure out why it's hot. Did you leave the fan on? Did the fan malfunction? The best way of getting a lot rid of a lot of heat is you stop the rid of water in the water box and add new oil, or new water, sorry. And then as that rod goes back and forth, it'll cool the rod down, which will turn it on really cool. It'll, it'll cool up real quick. And then in short, you put water on the hydraulic tank and start squatting down. And it'll dump a lot of heat off too, quickly. Uh, what should it be around? You'll be in Georgia, you'll probably be the same as us, probably around the 150 range, 140. It's like your working pressure. Shot creep might go a little higher. Might go a little higher. If you get something like that, you better start. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll feel it. You'll feel it radiating. Like, whoa, man, I gotta do something. It ain't good for it. Long term. You know what I mean? You can do it once, twice, ten times. But, you know, it'll get you over the life of it. So that K230 is leading to the switchover for reversing how the net and that's in here. And if you look at the placard here, it shows you what they do. So the closest one to you is for uh, S2, right and left. And the first one is for uh, your differential cylinder. So in theory, you see that middle of that bullseye where that proximity switch, I mean, sorry, the coil is? Here. See the middle of that bullseye? So I'm gonna... Yeah, that one. Gonna You're just gonna have to push it with a small Phillips back and forward. Stuff once, Mark, Mark, once. It'll start making sense to you. I'll give you this little tidbit before I leave. Pop it now. So that's all that that new up part is doing. That one power to one side. All that card does is, is put power on this side and that side and you switch back and forth back and forth back and forth yeah. so in theory if you lost all power manually you can get the concrete out of the cylinder manually in mm -hmm. short if you dump in a main drive pump you're yeah. gonna do nothing there <clears throat> so in that case I would bust I would bust this off take one of these out and manually with a with a pick out or pick bar or something move it over manually and then you can wash that cylinder out and then come on to the house and figure out what's wrong that's what I would do if I lost all power. I mean, hydraulic power. But if I lost just electrical and 
and I got a forklift hooked to me and I got it running. I come over here and switch over, wash out, switch it one more time. Boom, I'm done, let's go. Get back to the house, find out what happened. And they all near, you know, throw up, get that curtain fell down. Cylinder go out, and whatever. Proximity switch fell off, whatever. But you see it kind of making sense now, you know? Yeah. So, um, any questions that you can think of or we missed something that you thought you should know? covered all the bases. A lot take in, it is a lot. He's going to send you a PDF so you can kind of go over you know, your daily, And also weekly, the video. You monthly. can review this yeah. uh, as many times as you can. Right. Yeah. So just go ahead and just um, pump with it. Yeah. Don't pump with it, man. No, no, no. I'm, I mean right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because uh, we just wanted to see if you got the basics. So, uh, grease every 50 yards or after every job. Yes. And uh, cool. yeah, job. never leave water on the water box overnight. Yeah. The sprite. You, can, you can't turn the machine off, go home, and when you, turn, when you come back on, it'll be in the same position. And it's simple, it's well, you, can, you can leave it, you don't turn it all the way in at the end of the job. You leave it all the way out. Just be mindful when you turn it on, it's going to be wide as open. Mm -hmm. I usually, when I'm washing at the, end, at the end of the night, I usually leave it wide open because when I know I put my two gallons in, I turn it on, boom, 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 boom. I turn it off, put the slick pack in, boom, boom. I stop it and then I screw it all the way in, pack it up three turns, let's go. I, you know, by the time I'm doing all that, I ask the driver, hey man, you got to, what kind of stuff you got? Whoa. You see him do this? Yeah. It's a four. <laughs> Get your ass up there, you sorry master. Get up there. I want to see, I want you to see it's a four. All right, well, it needs 20 gallons. All right. By the time you have 20, I'm, I'm finishing up. It rolls out, let's go. <laughs> that's a good one. I don't know if you've seen me do that one. Huh? Have you seen me do that one? Beat yeah. on the drum? Oh, that's a beauty. They fuck me every time. Every time. Yeah, that, that's a six. That bitch come out and hit your grade about a three. You're like, you sorry, motherfucker. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Oh, we'll shovel it in. I'm like, man, that, that plug your ass up good. 
Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. All right.